Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. We're going to take a look at a slip joint from Liang Ma. This was part of his 2019 catalog, I think. Uh, but this is called The Traveler, and it's, it's slip joint-esque. It doesn't quite... Um, it's not quite a slip joint, it uses a different mechanism that I will show you. Um, but we're going to look at the Traveler here in more detail. And again, this is one from Liang Ma. So, um, there's a couple different variations just to get them out of the way right off the bat. As you can see, there is carbon fiber, uh, a green brown micarta. What does he call this one? Uh, I can't remember. It's a canvas micarta. Um, and then, you know, either with black G10 or orange G10 on this one, which is very cool. And there's a few different blade shapes with this one. So let's see what this one is. Here we have a drop point, again with that greenish micarta. Here we have a clip point with that really cool kind of orange and brown combination there. Here we have the carbon fiber with the sheep's foot blade. Pretty neat, and then this will be a repeat blade shape, but you know, obviously, kind of the green canvas here with the uh, the clip point. So, a um, couple different variations on blade shapes or handle material. I don't know if there's you know every single one in every combination, but there are different versions to choose from, and luckily, I have them all here to show you guys. So, um, got some slight differences in color here, pretty close. But this particular one is mine. I opted for the orange and this brown micarta. Um, just a really unique and interesting combination that, uh, you know, just I found it super appealing, found it different. Um, I'm typically a carbon fiber enthusiast. And uh, to be honest, that one still is quite tempting, but uh, I can't afford everything. So um, let's, I don't know, I'm not sure which one I want to focus on. Maybe we'll focus on the carbon fiber one. That one may show up best under the lighting. We're going to move some of these out of the way for a moment. And let's bring out some size comparisons. All right. So, further back. First size comparison we'll bring out is the Victorinox Cadet. Since some of you guys who are looking for non-locking knives, this might be one that you already have. Uh, we have the Kershaw Dividend, and I think those are probably the two most appropriate. I could always pull out the Spyderco Paramilitary 2, but that one is significantly larger, so hopefully this gives you a good idea. Uh, blade length on this one, 2.7 inches. Handle length, 3.5. Obviously the cutting edge is a little bit shorter since we do have a, uh, a forward finger trail here. Uh, again, we've looked at the blade shapes, we've looked at some of the different handle materials. It does weigh in at 3.0 ounces, and it does cost $275 at all the retailers. So, uh, blade stock coming in at uh, 0.145 inches, so 145 thousandths. Uh, a little bit thicker than, you know, like the uh, Kershaw Dividend here. And <laughs> obviously thicker than the... Uh, the Victorinox Cadet here. So, all right, so those are the specs. I think those are the size comparisons. Let me see if I'm missing anything. Uh, blade steel, if I haven't mentioned, is M390. It's marked right there. All right, so now let me show you guys what this looks like inside, because again, it's, it's, not a, it's not a traditional slip joint. It is a non-locking knife, but this utilizes a double detent system. So I have one of them taken apart right here. Let's focus in on this one. So here's the blade. Again, this one's the, the drop point. And, you know, we've got the pivot hole. It does run on bearings. And there is a steel washer that's, uh, you know, sitting inside the titanium. But we have a detent hole here and here. And then on the other side, we have two more detent holes. So in the closed position, you know, it's locking into one of them. Can't think here. Looking. Yeah, so in the closed position, it's locking into this one, right? And then as you pop it open, it opens up and the detent comes around and locks into the back one. So um, this is what the double detent system looks like. This isn't the first knife to employ it. Um, there was the 
Bob Terzula collaboration with Spyderco a few years ago that also utilized the double detent system. Uh, there may be others as well, but it, it does work. It, it works well. Again, it creates a non-locking knife. And on the bearings, you know, it's it's fairly smooth. If I had to give the the pull a, a weight or a numeric value, I'd say it's probably around a, a five or a six. But listen to that. So, yeah. So anyways, that's how it works. Really easy to uh, disassemble, reassemble. It, it went centered back perfectly. So again, a, a pretty cool option, pretty cool mechanism. Now, one thing that I was talking to Leong Ma about is he said, you know, these are titanium liners here. And what Riot did when they manufactured this is they um, bent the liners and then they, I'm sorry, let's center that. They bent the liners and then they torched them uh, or heated them so that it really locks those into place. So, you know, the, the detent strength caused by these liners should stay, you know, nice and strong over time. You shouldn't lose the detent strength because they did heat or torch the titanium. Uh, you know, Chris Reeve does that to their lock interfaces to make them tougher. So, um, you know, apparently it also works for spring tension to really lock that in well. So, um, yeah. All right, let's move that one out of the way. Let's bring this one back out and do some close-ups. Got their nice satin finish here. It is a fully ambidextrous knife. Um, the pocket clip is, you know, reversible. You just unscrew it, swap it over. We've got nail nicks on, well, they're kind of nail nicks. Obviously, they're a little bit bigger on both sides, which I appreciate. Nice little spot to pinch. Pull that open. Uh, titanium hardware. Got his unique uh, pivot design there. T8 Torx on all the screws. And then you also have a lanyard uh, pin at the back. So... You know, if you wanted to take off the pocket clip completely um, and just attach a lanyard, it's certainly doable and would work very, very well. All right. Yeah, I love their satin finish. They do a really good job. All right, so it does have a forward finger twirl, which, again, is important because when you have a non-locking knife, if you are going to do something that perhaps you shouldn't and you want to make sure it doesn't close on you, um, you can choke up to the forward finger trail position, and that way if you're doing something, you know, really hard, it's just going to try to clinch on your finger and it's not going to be able to close, which is awesome. Now, one problem that, that they ran into the manufacturing process is um, when Riot ground these, they actually ended up grinding this too. So they didn't, you know, they didn't put an edge on it, they didn't sharpen it, but it is, it's pointy. Right, I mean, it's it's not going to cut you or anything, but it's not super comfortable either. So in my hand size, um, works just fine. You know, makes me feel, gives me a lot of confidence in the grip. But if you've got some sausage fingers, and you know, you're going to be maybe going over the top of that, uh, may not be ideal. So I don't know. I'm on mine. I may take you know a little bit of uh, I don't know a steel rod or something and try to flatten that even more. Um, but again, that's I think that's really the only negative on the design. It really is kind of a, you know, again, different manufacturing method, but a, a modern take on a slip joint, which I think is, is pretty cool. All the edges, really nicely chamfered and rounded. It is comfortable. Um, you could, if you want to, try to lock your finger on the top to keep it from closing if you're coming back further. I, I don't necessarily know that I would trust that, but, you know, again... You'll use it however you want, so. But yeah, let's see how it fits here in my hand. So choking up, I can get a full grip on it. If I choke back, you know, get a little bit, get a three and a half finger grip on it. But yeah. So anyways, uh, pretty cool model. Again, I like the approach that he utilized um, with this one. Fit and finish is excellent. Um, 275, you know, more expensive than others, but I think there's still some value left even at that price point. Um, pocket clip. Plenty of space, works well in jeans. You've got the nice kind of large style, you know, bag uh, ball clip. Works really well and gives you a nice deep carry. So, 
Um, you can find this at, at a bunch of you know the U.S. retailers. Um, there are some European dealers too who carry these. So again, for those of you, you guys in Europe who can't have locking knives, um, this is also a, uh, a pretty good option here. So let's pull some of these back out again. Show you guys some of the uh, different combos here to uh, to wrap up. Uh, yeah, there we go. All right. Drop point, clip point, sheep's foot, a few different materials. So anyways, we will go ahead and leave it there. Um, thanks so much for watching, guys. I do need to get all these extra ones back to Leong here. Uh, I've had them for far too long, and I say that in a lot of videos. So um, more content to come, more videos to come. You can follow me on Instagram for daily content. And uh, yeah, see you guys soon.